What is happening guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today is going to be an extremely, extremely exciting day. We finally get to put the chassis back together. So that means we get to put the axle in, the whole three link system, the whole front suspension. We got to throw back on this frame, get this thing back on the ground and able to roll around. So I'm very, very excited for today. We got a couple things to do before we start bolting this thing together. I decided to change up a couple little minor details on the suspension work and we got to powder coat a few more things. So I haven't actually powder coated the three link arms. We got to powder coat those. I decided I want to change the color of the springs on the front and the rear. I really don't like the chrome look. So we're gonna take these, we're gonna strip the powder coating off and we're gonna re-powder coat these. So let's tear this stuff apart. We gotta run to my brother Devin's. He's got a powder coated stripper, just a big tank. You drop the stuff in and like two minutes later, it's completely stripped. So we gotta do that and then we gotta get back home, do some sandblasting and do some powder coating. So this is what we did in the last video. If you guys missed it, definitely, definitely go check it out. We got the coilover mounted up and we got everything powder coated so like I said I don't like the color of those springs I want to change those a couple other things too so these are the arms I had so many comments when I built this three link that these bushings aren't going to allow any articulation which I do agree with but on a two-wheel drive I don't think it's as big of an issue as especially a four-wheel drive now I did buy a Heim joint this is uh, from rough stuff I was going to use this for the center link here on the upper arm and just kind of put that on see if it articulates any better with that joint which I assume it will I don't think that is quite as strong as a big bushing but who knows this is from rough stuff supposed to be a really really strong joint so we got to do that also if you guys remember I did mess up the other threads on my joint for this so I actually got another bushing I'm gonna weld that together just for testing purposes once we get this all together we're gonna swap back and forth with the heim joint and the bushing on the front and just kind of go through and see what articulates better so like I said I don't think this is gonna be really an issue on a two-wheel drive now on a four-wheel drive if I did a three link I would 100% put a heim on each joint just because a four-wheel drive is made to articulate Whereas a two-wheel drive, not so much. I do realize it does have to move and articulate a little bit, but I do think these bushings are gonna allow for some of that. But like I said, we're gonna do some testing. So let's get these coilovers ripped apart. We gotta rip the springs off of the rear coils, and then we got to completely tear apart the front end again and get those springs out for powder coating. So, you weld that? Yeah, weld that Damn, All right guys, we are back at home. So actually, I don't know why I just automatically thought that these springs were powder coated. I know some of the QA1 springs are, these are actually chrome plated. So the powder coater stripper did nothing to these. What we're gonna have to do, I think, 
I've heard of people using muriatic acid or what's it, hydro, hydrochloric acid to strip the plating off, but I don't think it takes off the nickel. So what we might have to do is soak it to strip the chrome with the muriatic acid and then sandblast it. Yeah, you could go through and sandblast everything off, but that would take forever. Chrome is actually a real pain in the butt to sandblast off. So I think that's what we're gonna do. The muriatic acid and then the sandblaster. And then we can move on to powder coating. Also, one other quick note, I bought a new camera. I know some of you probably noticed the audio sounded way different. It sounds like I'm in a metal box. It sounds really echoey. So hopefully this is fixed now. I just bought an external mic for this camera. So hopefully audio is better. But either way, let's get to work with stripping this chrome and sandblasting. All right guys, this spring has been in here for probably, I don't know, 20 minutes. And you can see I was just letting it soak on the bottom there. It looks maybe just a little bit different, but not much. I'm gonna dry this thing off, get it in the sandblaster and see if that part that I soaked sandblast any easier. All right, we got the spring sandblasted, so I wasn't able to at least in my sandblaster, it's not strong enough to completely take this coating off. So what this is, is actually kind of just blasted into the chrome, which it's got the profile it needs for powder coating, but it's obviously better to start with a bare steel or you know your bare metal. So either way, I think this is gonna be just fine because while the chrome is a very strong coating and we got the profile we need. So I think we're gonna try it on this spring right now before I go and blast all the other ones. We're just gonna try this one, powder coat it, and see what happens. If it works, if it stays on, and it seems strong enough, then we'll go through and hit these springs and do those the same way. Well, I don't know if you guys were as worried as I was when I pulled this spring out for the first time with the base coat on. This is actually a two-stage powder we did, but this thing looked like super dark purple, and I thought there was no way it was gonna turn to red what it should be. I was freaking out until I put the clear coat on, put it back in the oven, and let that clear coat cure up, and this thing turned out sick. Let's check it out. Well, there it is guys. This is uh, called Illusion Cherry. And I know in the shop, it looks a little dark. I wanna get it off of these and get this thing outside and check it out in the sunshine. I know it's gonna look a lot better out in the sun. Oh yeah, there we go. It's kind of like a, it's a little bit darker than I thought, but I don't know if you can see it on the camera. There's actually, quite a bit of metallic in that powder. That looks so good. It's a little bit darker than I thought. What I want to do is, I know this is a uh, rear spring, but I want to kind of throw it on just a strut or a shock and just kind of throw it on the suspension, get an idea if this is kind of the color I want. I was hoping for a little bit more lighter of a red, but it is a good looking color. Let's throw it on shock, throw it in that cross member and see what it looks like. Well, there it is. We got the shot kind of sitting in there. Honestly, I like it. I wish it was, like I said, a little bit lighter, but I already have the powder and I don't want to wait for any more. So I think that's what we're going to go with. Nonetheless, looks a thousand times better than Chrome. Honestly, on the video I'm looking at right now, it does look a lot darker on camera. In real person, in real life, 
it does look a little bit lighter, but it is still pretty dark, but nonetheless, a very cool color. I'm gonna do a couple scratch tests on it, um, just where you can't see up on top here and make sure that it, the powders adhere to the spring. I don't think we'll have any issues at all with that, but I'm gonna take a knife, scrape at it a little bit, make sure that it's gonna stay on there and then we can bust out the rest of the springs. Well, messing with the razor blade, you can see it definitely scratched it, which obviously you take a razor blade to any coating, it's gonna scratch, but I wasn't able to actually chip the coating off at all. So I think we got plenty of adhesion. Let's go ahead and sandblast the rest of these springs and get them coated. So like I said, this color is called Illusion Cherry. It's a base coat, clear coat. So what you do, you take the base coat, spray that on, throw it in the oven at 375 for like two minutes after it, it gets its gloss, after it flows out, give it two minutes, pull it out, and then spray your clear coat after it cools down, then throw it back in. And you kind of want the base coat and the clear coat to cure at the same time. So that's why you only do two minutes with the base coat and then you do uh, 18 minutes at 375 once you have the clear coat on. So like always, this video is sponsored by Prismatic Powders. Guys, you gotta go check them out. If you wanna get into powder coating, go check out all the colors they have. Powder coating is so cheap. Once you're set up, once you have the oven, once you have the gun, the powder itself is so cheap. It's like 10 bucks a pound to do, say these springs are probably, I don't know, I bought two pounds of it. I probably won't even use one pound. So it goes a long ways. It is one of the best coatings out there. It's very strong, it's very thick, it's chemical resistant, it's salt resistant. It holds up to just about everything. So I got a link down in the description box to Prismatic Powders, you can find this color. And every other color, like the Alpine uh, bronze that we're gonna be using on the three link arms, I'll link that as well. Guys, go check them out, prismaticpowders.com.
All right, guys, we are all together, suspension-wise, except the rear coilovers, because I wanted to do some testing with articulation. Like I said, a lot of you guys were very worried about this thing not being able to articulate. So, like I said, I have all bushings in here right now, 100% bushing, 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 and the lower links both have bushings. And here is the Heim joint that I bought now. You guys tell me what is stronger if this Heim joint versus say one of these bushings, especially for the upper link right here. I need it as strong as I can. I have three quarter inch thread in that insert, so I can only use a three quarter inch uh, Heim joint. If I had a bigger like inch and a quarter, or inch and an eighth, whatever they are, I'm sure that would be plenty strong. But let's do some messing around, do some articulation and see what these bushings allow. All right guys, as you saw, we got plenty of articulation for a tool drive especially. Now yes, I did go through and crank these down, make sure these nuts are tight. As you hopefully could see in the last clip here of this joint right here, you could see the bushing flexing. So I do think we have enough articulation, especially because this is a tool drive. We're not going off road. We're not really you know flexing this thing out at all, but just for the sake of testing, wherever I put that joint, Let's throw this joint in and see if there's any difference. Well, there we go guys. Seems like it helps out a little bit. I think I'm gonna leave it on there for now. I bet if I did a Heim joint on one of the ends of the lower arms, I guarantee that would help a lot. But like I said, even with all bushings, I think it's got plenty of flex. So honestly, when I was researching all this info on the uh, Wishbone 3 Link, pretty much every single truck I saw had bushings on each and every joint. So that's kind of why I went with that. And there was even some like full size Chevy trucks with bushings on every single joint so that's why i didn't really worry about it and especially with these polyurethane bushings it's got enough flex so either way i think we're good to go let's go ahead and throw the rear coilovers on throw some wheels and tires on this thing and kind of see how the suspension is sitting right now i know there's no weight on it the front's probably going to be a lot higher just because there's no weight on the front and the front springs are a 600 pound spring the rear is only a 200 pound so once we get the cab and everything back on then we can figure all that out but for now Let's get this thing rolling. Well there it is guys, frame is back on the ground, wheels and tires are on. Now I don't know for sure if I'm running these, I picked these up for a pretty good deal. They are a very tall tire, so if I do use them, I'm sure I'm gonna need some shorter tires, but I kinda do like the wheels, but we don't know if they will fit until we get the body on. So just looking at this, uh, front is obviously a bit higher with all the weight up front, it might sag down enough to be even with the back, I'm not really sure, but if worse comes to worse, I can trim the coil springs up front and I think that'll be just fine trimming those down an inch or two just to get this thing low enough in the front, but definitely think the back is gonna be low enough. But all in all, I am absolutely loving the color combo with the red, the bronze, the black, looking so, so good. I am so happy with how this thing is turning out so far. Well, there it is guys, we are back together looking so, so good. I'm so happy with this. We do have a lot more work to get done. We got to paint a bunch more stuff, the tank, all the steering stuff, steering box, get all that together. Also, all the brake lines, fuel lines, I wanna do something with those just because they were painted from the factory and all the paint is falling off of that. So 
Might have to do something with that. And then we can start our work on the cab. The inside of the cab needs some work. It's got some rust. And actually one of the cab mounts to the frame is rusted through. So we got to replace that. Also another thing I noticed editing this video is the audio is kind of screwed up when I had the external mic pointed forward and I was talking from behind the camera. I'm sorry about that. I guess I'll have to switch the microphone around every time I switch the camera around. So it's a learning curve. So you're going to have to bear with me until we get this audio figured out. But hopefully the camera footage is better I know it's a lot more stable I've had a lot of comments saying my videos are really twitchy there's no like stabilization so this camera has a lot better stabilization if you guys are curious what it is it's actually a Sony ZV-1 so it's actually like a small digital camera which honestly I like better than my old camera which was a Sony A7 Mark II I actually like this thing a lot better you just point it shoot it you don't have to worry about it so it's a lot easier to use but either way we're gonna wrap this video up here I really really hope you guys enjoyed the video go smash that thumbs up button drop a comment let me know what you think. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you in the next one.